folks, welcome to Thinking Theology. I'm Don. On this channel, I don't establish theology. The channel is just theological topics, whether some folks, obviously Christian apologists, I'll analyze their arguments to see if they make sense. Atheist arguments, I'll analyze those to see if they make sense. I'm not afraid of any argument. Why would you be? They're just ideas. You, I'll handle my own beliefs. You can handle yours. But the idea of the channel is just to look at folks who have made um, claims or just have thoughts on theological topics. That's it. In this case, Albert Einstein. You see this behind me that I have on set when I did, frequently when I do my videos. Uh, but these are just 12 of Albert Einstein's thoughts about God. So there are some folks who think that any theological topic is idiotic because there's no God and it's just distracting or what have you. Well, too bad. That's just how life works. Many folks believe in God. I'm sort of in the middle, but very bright, science-minded people had thoughts about God, doubts about God, said, I'm not even sure. There might be, but let's see what Albert Einstein had to say. Here's the first quote. If something is in me which can be called religious, then it is the unbounded admiration for the structure of the world so far as our science can reveal it. He looks to see and looked to see how the universe worked. And if there is anything in him that could be religious, that was his religion, basically. He has an unbounded admiration for the structure of the world. Number two, I believe in Spinoza's God who reveals himself in the orderly harmony of what exists, not in a God who concerns himself with fates and actions of human beings. Now I can say that I'm kind of, I'm with him on that one for the most part. I have not seen the personal God, not one that's like a, a spiritual vending machine that makes everything happy and good for me, but just one that actually seems to be involved in my and other people's lives. There might be like a, a bus crash, you know, or a school bus crash where a bunch, a lot of folks died, but one didn't, and or a few didn't, and they're like, thank God for sparing me. But you're like, well, if God was actively involved in sparing you, what about the other ones? I just think there's a rich dynamic to life. We're on planet Earth. Entropy does exist. Things go from a state of higher order to a state of higher disorder, unless you consider death to be higher order, because then things are extremely predictable in the non-existence of someone. But is there a God who interacts and is controlling things? And I'm not a proponent of that view whatsoever. So if there is a God, like Einstein said, he believes in one who reveals himself in the orderliness. Now, I can't say that is my personal belief, that he reveals himself in that. But that's Einstein's view. We each have our own personal way in which we relate to life. And if there even is a higher being, some one greater than ourselves, this is how he sees it or how he saw it. All right, third one. Science without religion is lame. Religion without science is blind. So now, now take that for what it's worth. And I use that against the backdrop of folks who, some folks who have come out and said that th there's no such thing as thinking theology because theology itself is an unthinking person's approach to life. Not in those words, but that's basically the idiotic comment because you could talk about unicorns, okay, Uni or Santa Claus doesn't mean you believe in it, <laughs> in Santa Claus, let's say, or pick your example of anything. You know, Cartman on South Park does not <laughs> exist as a human being, a carbon-based life. You could talk about Cartman on South Park. Does he exist? Well, in one sense, yes. In another sense, no. But the idea that religion doesn't exist or that it's a non thing it, it doesn't involve thought or thinking or logic it absolutely does you may not like the premises we may not like the premises involved any more than the christians may or the religionists may not like the premises that atheists use to view things strictly through a scientific or reductionist model but they're both the product of thought 
simple. Einstein's view here, science without religion is lame. Religion without science is blind. All right, number four. My religion is cosmic, and my God is too universal to concern himself with the intentions of every human being. I, that's, part, that's similar to what he said earlier, and, and I have to say I agree with that. That's my experience in life. If there is a God, he seems to be relatively impersonal. If there's some record being kept of my life and every thought that will be revealed on Judgment Day, I, I, hopefully my life will pass the test, but I can't say that I live in hope of some reward later. My reward is with people now. I want to make their lives better to the extent I can. I'd like to be happy along the way to whatever extent I can, but I don't do it for some future self-serving interest. All right, number five, when the solution is simple, God is answering. Now this one I don't get. I don't understand it. I can make guesses about it, but that would be all there are. Part of me kind of doubts that Einstein even said that. Some things are attributed to people online that just weren't. But if he did say it, I got to say I don't fully understand it. Number six, human beings, vegetables, or cosmic dust. We all dance to a mysterious tone intoned in the distance by an invisible piper. Now, who or what is that piper? He could be anthropomorphizing principles in science and, and, and the clockwork as he occasionally refers to the universe and, and, and all that. But we all dance to a mysterious tune intoned in the distance by an invisible piper. Now, is that piper God or is that piper just the way in which things work? Seven, I see a pattern but my imagination cannot picture the maker of that pattern. I see a clock, but I cannot envision the clockmaker. The human mind is unable to conceive of the four dimensions, so how can it conceive of a God before whom a thousand years and a thousand dimensions are as one? And I, and I understand that, and I think that that is a fair assessment, if you will, maybe because I happen to agree with it, that how can we conceive of a God? I can say I believe in God or a higher power or a creator. There, I have no problem logically with that. And I'm sort of on the fence on this. I do, it does make sense to me that there's a creator, not because the Bible or any texts say it, just because the way in which the human mind organizes pattern recognition. We are wired for pattern recognition for survival. Is that a bush or is that a lion? Like, it helps to know the two, because one, we survive. If I see a lion in the distance and I get out of harm's way, I survive. If I think it's a bush and I'm not paying attention and it's a lion, I die. Pretty simple. So we're wired for pattern recognition. For me, it makes sense that when we see something that has seemingly has an organization to it, that there was a creator to it. That doesn't mean I'm right on that view. There doesn't necessarily have to be. I may be begging the question with that, so to speak, in a circular reason where anything that's created has a creator. Maybe I'm just a product of evolutionary processes and our brain, the human brain, creates things. It merges different ideas and may go too far in saying, oh, look at all of this. There must have been a creator. I don't disparage anybody who believes that. To me, it does make sense that matter came from somewhere, that it didn't just exist, but maybe it has. So I can understand or relate to what Einstein said in this one, that how can we, how can we conceptualize of a God specifically, as he said, before whom a thousand years and a thousand dimensions are as one. But it does seem to say he does believe in a God or a God of some sort. Number eight, the devil has put a penalty on all things we enjoy in life. Either we suffer in our health or we suffer in our soul or we get fat. And uh, certainly in America, we've gotten fat. Obesity is one, of the, is one of the biggest problems we suffer from here. But he's saying the devil has put a penalty on all things we enjoy in life. 
I think it, it may have been George Burns, but it could have been Woody Allen. I don't know. Somebody who said the problem with wanting to live to be 100 is you have to give up all things that make you want to live to be 100. And you're like, yes. I mean, wine, snacks, food, all this stuff. And Einstein says the, de the devil has put a penalty on all those things that we seem to enjoy. All right, but the interesting part here is that he referred to it as the devil. And that, that could have just been tongue-in-cheek. I don't think he literally meant that. But nonetheless, it does have a theological undertone or even an overtone to it. So those of you who think that theology or just talking about theology doesn't have any logic to it, you're mistaken. Number nine. My religion consists of a humble admiration of the illimitable superior spirit who reveals himself in the slight details we are able to perceive with our frail and feeble mind. From this quote, obviously he thinks that there is a, a mind, a being in possession of a mind, which we might call God or a God, but he, he referred to it as a superior spirit. Who reveals himself in the slight details? Okay, so we maybe Einstein is saying that we, we get glimpses of this God and how the universe is structured. Number 10, a man's ethical behavior should be based effectually on sympathy, education, and social ties and needs. No religious basis is necessary. Man would indeed be in a poor way if he had to be restrained by fear of punishment and hope of reward after death. I agree with that wholeheartedly. The notion that I'm going to do something for you now because God will reward me later, I find that view almost abhorrent. I think you do something for somebody in the moment if you can do it out of kindness, out of generosity, out of thoughtfulness, out of bettering the human race, out of civility, however you want to word it, but not because if I do this now, here's the formula. I do this now and I get tenfold later. That's just, not, that is not true kindness. That's investment. That's not giving, that's investment. And it has self-serving motives. We all have self-serving motives. I mean, I feel good when I better someone's life in the moment. Is that self-serving to a point? But it does, it does it benefit the other? Yes. But the notion that I'm going to do it primarily for some potential future gain, to me, that's not how I process life. So in this, I, I agree absolutely. Do you need a religious basis? No. Altruism is an idea of doing something simply out of kindness. Do the biblical texts implore kindness and generosity and love? Yes, they do. Would people be kind, loving, and generous without the biblical texts? Yes. My opinion, obviously. So I agree, though, wholeheartedly with this statement, um, at least attributed to Albert Einstein. 11. I cannot imagine a God who rewards and punishes the objects of his creation. Now that is lots of food for thought right there. And I happen to agree with it, parts of it. Look at the premises laid out before you. Doesn't mean you believe them, but you could say, if God is a rewarder and a punisher, well, he created us. So I'm created a certain way. If God is in control, as it's posited in some sectors, generally of Christian thought, but I'm not familiar with Islam as much, you know, the Hebraic text, some say God is in control of things on a larger scale, but not a smaller scale. Nonetheless, if God is in control, then how am I to blame? If I'm being puppeteered along to do certain things, how am I to blame for that? If I had no say over it, if somehow spiritually and secretly my brain is being controlled to make me do certain things, how am I going to get punished for that or even rewarded? So those premises don't work. They don't seem to line up with the notions that we have of reward and punishment. So with Einstein, he can't imagine a God. 
who rewards and punishes the objects of his own creation. And I, there's a logic to what he just said, and that does contradict what you would read in the texts, the biblical text. And I'm okay with that. And then number 12, I love this one. I am content in my later years. I have kept my good humor and take neither myself nor the next person seriously. And that's me. And that's where, even on this channel, where some folks who are religion, who are very religious, will sort of come at me or attack, you know, if I'm reviewing Richard Dawkins, let's say, and I agree with some point that Dawkins making, I'll have some folks come at me pretty hard for agreeing with a point he may make. And then, but also the atheists come at me if I say, all right, I can agree with this view that this person who believes in God that he has, but keep your good humor about you. Keep your beliefs, but you don't have to be a jackass about it, whether you believe in God or whether you don't believe in God. Believe it or not, you can take Einstein's approach in here and not be overly pessimistic about others, not be overly optimistic about others, but where he says, look, our knowledge is limited. Is there a God? There might be. I'm speaking on behalf, in a sense, of scientists, if you will, or people who may or may not believe in God, but they're like, there might be. that We don't know. We weren't there at the beginning of the universe, at the creation of the universe, or Karl Popper would agree with that, that we can't reproduce that experiment, so it doesn't constitute science. So talk of the beginning of the universe doesn't constitute that which we can prove. And he considers the, you know, his five principles of falsifiability that we weren't there at the beginning of the universe. If it had a beginning, we weren't there. When life sprang into action, for example, according to evolutionary biologists in the primordial soup, we were not there. Do we think we have evidence of it? Yes, but can we reproduce that in a laboratory? No, we cannot. So does that constitute science? It would not, according to Pop. All of that said, we can still talk about it, just like theological topics. But keep your sense of humor about it, because there's a lot we don't know. There's a lot you don't know. There's a lot I don't know. And embrace it. It's fine not to know, believe me. As I say, but bossy people, for example, or opinionated people, it must get tiresome and wearisome being the general manager of the universe. Lighten up, have some fun, and if someone disagrees with you, you can still go to din dinner with them if they're not a douchebag. So, anyway, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that, folks. Leave your comments, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and uh, we'll go from there. Have a great day and keep thinking theology if, if it's your cup of tea.